Welcome to episode 141 of the Speed Secrets Podcast. We're talking all about the world of HPDE today, and my guest is Dave Peters, who founded and runs HPDEJunkie.com, a great website that provides a list of just about every HPD event in the U.S. As someone who sees all of these events, his perspective on the sport is very interesting. Hey, by the way, I have a big announcement at the end of my conversation with Dave, so stick around for it. Hey everyone, welcome to the show again. Uh, today I'm talking with Dave Peters, the I guess the founder and uh, everyday operator of HPDEJunkie.com. D- Hi Dave, uh, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here on the show. Uh, hey Ross, um, and I appreciate you having me and I look forward to it. Um, how, how, did you, how did you start, or, or I guess how and why did you start HPDEJunkie.com? So tell us that story and then we'll... We'll talk about all sorts of other driving things later. So, Okay. Um, I had done one track day and was instantly hooked. Um, you know, I had sports cars my whole life and drove on back roads and thought I drove, drove fast until I did a track day. And so I was sitting at my computer looking for my next one. And I had five or six tabs open and I was flipping back and forth, comparing dates and prices and which track I wanted to go to. And you know, the proverbial light bulb went off and, you know, my first thought was, well, I don't know much about websites, but I can't let this go. And I think that I can, you know, pay someone to build it for me and, and whatnot. So it really started my own search for track days and and having a tough time finding them. And and how long ago ago was that? The first year of listing was 2015. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So, and it's just grown. I mean, I, I'm curious, like how many people, how many drivers use your site now? I mean, approximately, do you know? Um, you know, it's hard to say, um, you know, a lot of it's based on me being able to read the analytics of the site, but I'm ha- I have about 150,000 users a year. Um, whether or not some of those are the same people or not, I'm really not sure. And I've actually tried to somewhat calculate you know, what is the potential amount of drivers in the U.S. doing this? And it's a tough figure to kind of come up with. Um, my guess is somewhere around a half a million. But again, it's a it's a hard, uh, hard figure to put your finger on. You know, I, I've often wondered that myself, like what, uh, uh, you know, how many people, how many drivers are there out there that are going to the tracks on weekends, you know, whether they do one event a year or 50 events a year. Um, it, do you think the sport is growing? I I do um, in, in the sense of I think there are more drivers um, getting involved. Uh, I, in fact, I kind of feel like it's not even well known yet. I, I still come across a lot of people that you say track day or HPDE and they have no clue what you're talking about. But I, I believe that it's growing um, for sure in drivers because you're con- you know I constantly see new people at the track. The the part that's not growing is the number of events every year has pretty consistently been the same at least the last three years. The first year had we had less events, but it could have been just not knowing of some groups that were doing it. Um, but you know it's been right around a thousand to eleven hundred events a year for the past three years. And to me, it's really based on the number of racetracks that you can do it at and how many days are in, in the year. And, you know, of course there's club racing and pro racing and motorcycle events and, you know, other things that go on at the track too. So really the, to me, what's limiting the growth of events is days in the year and racetracks. So we need more racetracks, which (laughs) may not happen. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's a. Uh, I've talked to a few different track managers and people involved with that that end of things, and uh, I think that's a tough business. But what you're saying is there just needs to be more available days to have more events. And and when you're talking those numbers, are you strictly the U.S.? Do you include Canada as well? Do you do Canadian events or as well? Up to, up until this, you know, this year we have been U.S. based, but I, I'm seeing so much activity on Instagram 
out of Canada that it's definitely something in the back of my mind that, you know, I'm trying to decide, is this something I should add? I don't really see anything that's going to hurt me by doing it. And in fact, it will probably help. Um, actually, you might be able to tell me how many tracks do you think there are in Canada that are doing this? Oh, uh, and yeah, being Canadian now, I'm kind of like, well, come on, let's go. I, you know, I, <laughs> so off the top of my head, I can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I'm going to say 15 that I can think of off the top of my head, just really quickly, just kind of going across the country. So, um, and that's, you know, that's probably, uh, I, I'm sure there are more than, more than that that are doing some events. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah I, I honestly didn't realize it was that many and, and I'm sure you're probably aware. I think my last count, we had 75 to 78 tracks in the U S putting on events yeah yeah huh it, and, mean, and a, about the same number of groups or clubs putting on events which tends to surprise people that there's 75 companies out in the u.s doing this well and when you say companies are there event organizers that's like for-profit businesses but what about the car clubs are you including that in there as well you know i i do um i have bmw car club i have um um, Audi Car Club. I'm trying really hard to get as many PCA Porsche Club of America events as possible. Um, as you surely know, there's a gazillion regions, and figuring out which ones do HPDE and which ones don't, and there's not a a national calendar for them. Well, there there somewhat is. It's just not overly populated. So I kind of rely on PCA regions in themselves contacting me. And saying this is what we're doing this year, um, I'm more than happy to put their events on, on the site. In fact, one of my goals is to you know actually have every track day HPDE event on the site. And so, and, it's, if there are any PCA listeners out there, yeah, contact yeah. us and uh, let's get your events on the site. Well, that's the thing. Yes. Like it, it, it's you don't charge for organizers to put events on your site, do you? I do not. It's so, completely free. So, so you kind of like, well, duh, come on, guys. Uh, I you, know, you, and that's exactly <laughs> how I feel. So, anybody listening to this, if you have any event, you know of any event, uh, make sure that the organizers are getting a hold of Dave and getting their events listed there, because you know, you know, it's interesting because I go around to a variety of different events, uh, you know, car club events, uh, for profit businesses events, and you know. Uh, some of them are saying, you know, hey, business is really good. It's growing a little bit. And then others are saying, man, it's getting harder and harder and harder to get people to come out. And I'm sure some of that is the competition. But I wonder how many people just don't even know that the events exist. So, um, you know, you're offering an a incredibly valuable service. And maybe some people are just not taking advantage of it. Uh, it, it could be possibly that or, you know, it, some of the PCA groups may not be aware of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I couldn't help but kind of cue in on you saying some are doing well and some aren't. Um, I see that, too. And, and it, it kind of surprises me at times um, why some don't do as good as others or some just really, you know, pack the house. Every event sold out a month in advance. Um, so. You know, I, I really wish I could put my finger on why. Um, I think, if anything, you know, what the the typical driver's looking for is who's got the most track time. Um, I hear that all the time. I mean, track time, track time, track time. So, you know, I, I think that's what's getting the ones that are selling out. That, that's probably their main reason. And if they run really smoothly or not. I've been to a couple, couple events that um, – it's just like, what are what are you thinking? Yeah, you know, yeah. this is so unorganized, and you know there'll be twenty people running around with the organizer's jersey on, and it's like you got all these people. <laughs> What's going on? Um, I honestly think the ones that run the best are with the least amount of people, kind of there running the show. Oh, that's interesting, uh, and I wonder um, uh, because I, uh, you know, I, I I agree with you that I think. You know, the first thing that drivers look for is track time. But 
one of the things that I've heard a lot of is certain drivers saying, oh, I don't run with that group anymore because, you know, there's too many crazy people there or, you know, they're just, you know, let everybody go. It's a free for all. It's, it's, you know, there's too many crashes. So I think, you know, I, I believe that kind of the, the culture of the event is, is important as well. And maybe even the, you know, how social is it? How friendly is it? How, how much fun? I know of some groups that, you know, they run good events, but wow, they take some of the fun out of it by being so, so serious about it. So I think it's finding that right balance and, um, yeah, I, it's it's interesting. I, so I'd love to hear more of your perspective on that. Is yeah, I, I kind of agree that you know sometimes it does get a little too um, uptight or, or you know like it's too professional if that's even something you can say. Um, but you know the ones I have the most fun at are the ones where the drivers are, you know, just good guys or girls. There's a lot of girls coming and doing it now, but. You know, that's become one of my favorite parts is the people that I meet and they become, you know, actual friends that I stay in touch with and hope to see at another event and we communicate and, you know, when are you going here and when are you going there? And so I, I really look forward to that, the camaraderie um, that's there. And I feel like it takes kind of the same type of person to want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. I, I guess I'm curious, um, you know, when I look at your website, I go HPDE in places you say high performance driver education, some places you say high performance driving events. I believe personally it's, it's HPDE stands for, the E stands for education. Uh, but I'm curious, like, you know, there are people that say we're, we do HPDE, HPDE events and others say we do track day events. What's What's your, I guess, your thoughts on the differences and where they fit and things. Honestly, I, I really don't see a difference. Um, as far as the way they're titled, you know, to me, it's, if anything, I see more track days related to motorcycles or European events. Um, but I don't honestly don't see much of a difference, um, in either two, you know, and, and I know PCA calls them DEs, you know, driver's education, yeah. which I agree with you. I think it is more about educating. And, and if you choose so to move on up to, you know, club racing or endurance racing or, or something like that, I, th I think that it's a great start. And I also hear, you know, a lot of those endurance racing series is there, there's guys out there that have never even done a track day. So, um, that kind of surprises me, you know, because it's not a, a event that equip that in requires a, a license a racing license most of the time so yeah i think it's an educational tool and and um it should be seen that way yeah yeah and i know that like some track day events uh you know there's no education a formal education part of it you know there are no instructors there are no classroom sessions it's kind of a you know it's an open day bring your car out drive around the track and you're kind of on your own uh, so that, I guess if some, when I think about the two, I think about a track day is, uh, it's just a day where you go and drive on the track. Whereas, You're more of an open track. Yeah. Uh, HPDE, there's an education component to it. Um, and it's funny, you know, like I, I've heard some drivers say, oh, I'm beyond HPDE. I now do track days. Like, <laughs> like I don't need any, I don't need to learn anything more. Uh, so I, I, which I don't care if you're driving a formula one, you still need to learn more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can always learn. And, yeah. and, and honestly, I, you know, I wish I could say that I, I feel a difference or see a difference between the two and, and it might be a bit of a East coast, West coast, um, thing in the sense of, I, I know it's been going on on the West coast for far longer than the East coast. So, and, and I also at times get a bit of a feel that, you know, it's a di slightly different atmosphere or, or, or such on the, on the East coast versus the West coast. I think it's still so new, um, over here that it might be looked at a little differently. I, I don't know. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I, I see, and I, I see, and I feel different, uh, 
definitely different cultures and different, uh, it's, it's almost a different mission at different events I go to. Uh, I'm not sure I've really noticed a big, big difference kind of west to east, but, you know, there are pockets of it, you know. Um, you know, I always say that, uh, you know, the guys up in upstate New York, uh, Genesee Valley, BMW, and Niagara Region PCA, they do a great job because they work together. You know, I was at a just recently at a event at Brainerd where the Audi and BMW clubs work together. In the Northwest, the Audi PCA and BMW clubs work together. So I think where I see the clubs working together, I see a very, uh, a different and very, very positive um, uh, event and culture and, uh, you know, approach to things. Um, I'm not saying that some of the clubs that do it just on their own can't do the same thing, but uh, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like when you get, BMW, Audi, Porsche club guys, and, you know, Mustang and Miatas and whatever. It's a driving group. Whereas some of the clubs are so focused on the mark that it becomes, you know, well, if you don't drive our car, you're don't, you're not welcome here. Uh, well, I, I, I can't really say I have experience with that because I haven't, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've done any events sponsored by a club. Uh, -huh. But, but I could see, you know, where that would be the case. And, you know, I guess when you have a bunch of guys that have the same car, you know, that's a little more likely. And But, the, you know, what I've, I've seen is that all of the clubs that do put on events always open it to every car. And, um, you know, they're, they're not saying because you drive this or that, you can't come. So that's good. And, and, and back to you saying about the teaming up, I, I think it's great. I, I think that... Um, you know, there's there's no reason why they shouldn't, especially with the clubs. I, I think they probably have a little tougher time filling an event than maybe the groups that do it for profit. Um, I can't say that for sure, but it's just maybe a, a little bit of a feeling I get just being around it. Well, it, I'm also reminded of, um, oh, five years ago, I first time I got invited by Rally Sport Region PCA, who is a club that does their events on their own and does an incredibly fantastic job. Uh, Christian Maloof and all his team there. And, you know, I remember going to that Porsche club event and, you know, the, maybe, I don't forget what it was, you know, maybe 120 or 140 entries or something like that. And 95% of them were Porsches. And I think right. you know, that this last time I was there just earlier this year in June, you know, if they had the same number, I would say like, it almost seemed like 60% were Porsches. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there was, you know, 30% were Miatas uh, and just a mix of Mustangs and Corvettes and, you know, all sorts of different kinds of cars. And it's, you know, it's just a, they're a very open, open and welcoming group. And uh, I, I think it's one of the reasons why some groups seem to be growing and some struggling more to grow. I, I would agree. You know, I, I think, like I said, one of my most enjoyable parts is is the meeting people and talking with people and you know your conversations are going to be about what you're doing so you all have something in common and um you know I was just at pit race last weekend and and the two guys that I became friends with one had a Porsche GT3 RS and the other guy had a Laguna Seca Mustang and and I drive a Miata and um you know, we all got along. There was definitely, definitely no, um, you know, ill will towards anyone because they had a different car. And, you know, it, it was, I don't know. I, I just enjoy meeting everybody in their different cars. Of course, I think the Miata is the best car for the track, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I kind of keep it my secret as to how, how I look at it. Um, yeah. Well, I got to, I got to let you in on a secret. The Miata thing, it's not a secret. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Honestly, I have a lot of Porsche guys come up and ask me about it. And and I think they, you know, even though they have the money to run a Porsche, it just kind of starts making sense. Um, these guys are running up my butt in the corners in Miatas and I'm driving a hundred and fifty to $200,000 car. What's going on here? And, um, you know, not only is the maintenance minimal, but 
to me, it's so much fun to drive. It, it's just so well balanced. It gathers up easy. And, you know, who doesn't love taking their $2,500 to $3,000 car and chasing down expensive Porsche, Porsches and Corvettes and Ferraris? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, and, you know, while we've spent a ton of time on this sh- podcast talking about that, you know, you, you just you learn more about the uh, the art, the craft, the science of driving when you are driving a slow car fast. Yeah, and, and um, I kind of, I you know, started out in HPD in a 370Z, which was, you know, it was great that I had it and I had a car that was track capable. Um, but once I got in a Miata, I, I mean, I really honestly don't want to drive anything else. I, you know, there's times I wish I had a little more horsepower, but it's just so much fun. And, and, um, it's, you know, mine's fairly raw, no power steering and stuff like that. So there's no nannies and I still have to heel toe, which, you know, is fun to me. So I don't know, I guess I take a little bit of a, a little bit of pride from the fact that there's not a nanny driving for me and, and such. And I don't know, I, I just love the Miata. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So stepping back, how did you get involved with motorsport in the beginning and then into the HBD events? And what, what's your background there? How did, how did all that happen? Um, my dad, actually, he had me at um, the United States Grand Prix. I believe it was 1970 at Watkins Glen. Wow. And I, I obviously don't remember it, but um, I've seen a lot of the pictures from us standing around and um you know, standing around the camp and such. And then just throughout my life, my dad was a, always an avid road racing fan. And, you know, I, I often ask him, how did you find out about these without internet? Because we were going to SCCA events. We were going to IMSA events, a uh, couple of Can-Am events in the early 70s. We went again to Formula One in, I believe it was 77. It was the year that Mario won the championship. Oh, yeah. So really throughout my life, I I went to races at least two, three a year. And then um, in the, you know, the later years, we started doing pretty much the vintage weekends and watching racing. And, and, you know, really, even at this point in the late 90s, maybe even 2000, 2001, I didn't even realize that you could do an HPDE or a track day. And, you know, of course, being around it my whole life and watching it, I wanted to do it. I just wasn't in the financial situation to do it. I mean, I could tell it was not cheap even at at, at the lower amateur level. So when I found out about HPDE, I was, you know, like, this is me. I'm in. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of, you know, really where it started. And now, you know, my dad's constantly pestering me why don't you come to the race and watch and i'm like what goes through my head is well that eats up a weekend and then i might not be able to go drive my car (laughs) on the track you know another weekend so he started to come to the events and um enjoys watching you know if it's a group that allows ride-alongs he'll usually do a ride-along or two so um it's good Uh, you know it's it's a good thing it keeps him and i something to do together well, I think you know, that's one of the great things about this sport, I think, is just, uh, you know, you can um, you, you can do it with, with families. I mean, you know, I know so many father, sons, father, daughters, daughters, mothers, you know, uh, cousins, whatever, you know, um, that are connected because of the sport. So, you know, and, and I suppose there's some of that in other sports, but, uh, you know, this is such a, um, it's all about participation. You know, you can you can have a son or a daughter who plays tennis or football or baseball or whatever, and you know I think the parents end up being spectators. And yet, uh, as you talked about, I mean, your dad can come to the track with you, or you can go with your to a race with your dad, and that's that's a cool thing. Yeah, it, it is. It definitely is. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> So how much of that, uh, you know, f- f- seeing Can-Am, I mean, you said you don't really remember much of that first Formula One race, but uh, uh, do they make you want to go racing? You know, honestly, I, I thought 
I wanted to race and, you know, maybe do the endurance racing and, and, and such. But, you know, I really don't have a, a huge desire to wheel to wheel race. And, and it might come, you know, later. I've, I've only actually been been doing this since 2014. So I'm still pretty new to it. Um, I just don't have a real strong competitiveness in me anymore. I, I think when I was younger, I, I played sports and, you know, I, I had that. But at some point it just became, yeah, it's not that important for me to be faster or better or, or whatever. And, and, you know, at, at this point, I'm enjoying so much what I'm doing that I really haven't really thought much about racing. And, and I have a couple of several buddies that, you know, have cars and do WRL and champ car and, and such that are, you know, constantly, you should come drive with us. And I'm just like, ah, I don't, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to s- slow down somebody or, you know, the team's going to lose because of me or something to that effect. So at this point I'm on hold for racing. Well, I'm going to encourage you to go and give it a try anyways, because, uh, there you learn so much about driving from doing that. But on the flip side, I, you know, what I think is cool is that there's, there's kind of an opportunity for anybody at any level. And, you know, there is no pressure to go racing. Uh, you could go and do HPD events for the rest of your life and and have a blast doing it. So, uh, absolutely, absolutely. It, where do you where do you put yourself as a driver? Um, um, <laughs> give me a little more. Well, what you're looking for? Well, I mean, where like how are you? Are you advanced solo in HPD events? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I, t- I typically end up running in the intermediate group mainly because of horsepower. Um, I mean, I, I definitely, I've run a few advanced groups and, and I do find, you know, it's, it's really about awareness. Um, I don't have any issues with that, but what I'm finding is m- most of the advanced groups are high horsepower cars. And I end up with my arm pointing out the window all day long, <laughs> you know, down the straightaways and such. And I, I don't have as much fun. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I've, I've even, um, at events, uh, chin track days draws a lot of high horsepower cars, even in the intermediate group. And the last one I went to, it was pretty much Porsches, Corvettes, Ferraris, and me. So I actually went to them um, about halfway through the first day. And, you know, I was like, would you guys mind if I ran novice just so I can not watch my mirrors as much? And uh, they're fine with it. And, you know, I don't I'm not like an ego guy that I have to be in in a certain group to feel good about myself. So I just want to have fun. And um, so I typically will run intermediate just based on it. I can being a little more um common ground i guess well i yeah. think that's a I huge that's takeaway message there is, is you know uh, i i know so many drivers who are like i've got to get you know they're novice that got to be no, i want to be intermediate you know i want to be intermediate solo i want to be advanced and they're so caught up in the getting to the next level that maybe they're not having quite as much fun as if they step back and and or accept where they are and just just focus on the driving part of it which is what it seems like you do i i completely agree um i i see that a lot you know and where guys are like what do i got to do to get to advanced and what do i got to do to this and and to be honest my first um time that i was put in intermediate i had no idea i was going to be and uh, i had done i don't know five maybe six events and I, I showed up at VIR for an event and um they had put me in intermediate and I, I had a little bit of a panic attack you know in the sense of I, you mean I don't have that guy in the right hand seat telling me when to stop um but it was fine you know it was uh, it, it, I didn't you know I probably did one lap and I never thought about it again so it was a little bit of a, a, a shock to me yeah yeah, it, it's um, uh, so. So, how long have you been tracking them? So, when did you do your first HPD event? Sorry, it was uh, 2014, and and it was you know I luck. I'm lucky enough to live 
closest to VIR. So that was my first track, um, which was wonderful. I think it had just been repaved a couple months prior. So yeah. it was, you know, extremely smooth and, and it was a nice weekend. So, you know, it was kind of the perfect, perfect way to start. I, I'd feel really bad for somebody that showed up for one their first time and it was raining all weekend. Well, oh. uh, if, you, <laughs> if you know anything about me, I'd be like, you know, I, I feel sorry for people that show up and it's sunny all weekend. They don't get to drive in the <laughs> rain because uh, I just think there's so much to learn from driving in the oh, rain, obviously. But uh, And I agree with you. I just, I don't know. I think it could potentially leave a bad taste in someone's mouth if it was their first time and it was wet and, you know, because it's obviously a lot different. Yeah. I wonder, I you know, I'm, I, as you say that, I'm kind of like, is that because, is it because of the expectation? You know, like once we've driven on a dry track and it starts to rain, you go, oh, I don't have any grip. You know, I'm going to be sliding around. I can't see, you know, oh, this is not as much fun. But if it is your first time and it's raining and you go, that's what this is. Like you don't, you don't know what else there is. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's a very good point. Well, I don't know about you, Dave, but I have absolutely no control over the weather, so I'm not going to worry about it too much because because I can't uh, I I can I can't predict the weather, let alone control it. So, no, I'm with you there. I just show up and and take what I get. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so let me dig, if you don't mind, can I dig into your driving a little bit? Like, based sure. on let's see, you've really been doing these events for about five years, um, and, and and first of all, just you know. So you're doing these events, you're driving, you're working on your driving, you've got a Miata, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you're providing this service with your hpdejunkie.com website that lists every event in the U.S. for now. Um, I'll get you in Canada and then we're going to work on Europe and Australia and Japan. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, uh, when you go to the track, what specifically are you working on with your driving? Like, is it? the line is it getting smoother is it braking is it i got to get the throttle more i need to look farther I, i'm just kind of throwing out a bunch of things that i hear a lot of drivers is, is there anything particular in your driving right now and part of it is i'm kind of going uh you know there's a theme to where most drivers get to by around five years in that intermediate to advanced driver and i'm curious where you are i i would say that what I tend to work on most is is my braking and, and compressing the brake zones. I, I'm still a little victim of um, over braking at times. Mm. Um, I, I feel like I have a really good sense of the line and and consistency of a line. Um, and I think you know one of the recent things this year I've, I've switched to a 100 100 treadwear tire. So getting the confidence in the grip of those tires has been what I've been working on, the, you know, this season. And and I feel like I'm kind of getting there where I'm, I'm comfortable letting it slide out a little bit and, and such, but um, yeah, braking is probably, you know, I love it. I, that was kind of the biggest eye opening thing for me, you know, doing a track day, having, you know, driven on back roads and driven fast. You, you just, I never thought, and I think the, the normal person never thinks to, let's see how close I can get to that stop sign before I hit the brakes. So that's like a, a huge rush for me. Is, and, and I have the little like devil on one shoulder and angel on the other going, you know, go a little deeper. No, be safe. Don't. And so I, I really, really enjoy that. Um, so, yeah, braking, I, I'd say is is what i work on the most convincing myself i can go deeper and a couple of things there one is the the convincing yourself that confidence thing that you kind of mentioned but um in a email exchange somewhere in the past week or so uh you mentioned something about you know you used to do a lot of i guess uh quick driving on some back roads but not so much anymore no i don't at all anymore in fact i um, once I traded, you know, to the Miata, I didn't really have a sports car to drive around town. And even when I still had the 370Z, once I drove it on the track a few times, I kind of really woke up to the fact of how dangerous it is to drive fast, you know, on back roads. And, and where I live, 
man, I feel like there's more police than anywhere I've ever been. You can't go anywhere without seeing several. So, you know, it just kind of, I, I, I don't want to discourage anybody, but it really just kind of seemed pointless to me to, to do it anymore. And, and I think having to wait until I get to the track is, you know, the anticipation and all, I, I really enjoy that, you know, and, and when I get there, I get to do it kind of thing. So yeah, I just, and, and my car is not street legal, so I, I can't take the Miata out anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me anymore. And it's no fun uh, thrashing around the back roads in your tow vehicle, towing your Miata, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, but that uh, the interesting point you make is, uh, you know, there's the fun of there's the fun of driving on the track, but there's also the fun of the anticipation and preparation of driving on the track too, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, I tell people all the time my my car lives on jack stands far more than it's on the wheels. Um, typically, you know, when I get home within a day or two, I've taken the wheels off and jack it up and. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty anal about checking things. I've had things break on me that are like, well, you better check that from now on. So, um, yeah, I really do enjoy that part of it. And I wasn't very um, mechanic mechanical on my previous cars. I mean, I had done small modifications here and there, but um, I've really gotten into you know being my own mechanic and and seeing how it's not as tough as I thought it was. Huh. That's encouraging, and uh, it, it's it, it interesting. And and I, I think a lot of drivers, you know, they get into that part of it and they enjoy that part of it. Almost, it, you're either one of two ways. I think you either get into doing the mechanical stuff and go, "Man, I like this part of it." It's you know, it's part of the preparation, it's part of the anticipation part of it. Or you're the flip side, and you're just like, "Man, I hate that part of it." Just somebody <laughs> else get my car ready. I just want to go and drive it. You know, uh, it's one of those two. I think. Yeah. And, and for me, it was, you know, m not much of an option in the sense of if I want to do this as much as I'd like to do this, I need to work on my own car and not pay someone else to do it. And and honestly, there's um, a lot of a peace of mind feeling I get from that. And, you know, where I live, there's not a, a lot of high end shops. It's, you know, it's your basic just automotive repair places. And you know, there were a lot of times I just didn't feel comfortable with the guy that was in the back working on it or, or whatnot. And I guess I came to a, a conclusion that, you know, if I do it, I know that it's tight or I know that it got greased or, or you know, whatever the case may be. So I, I actually get a lot of peace of mind out of it and along with the enjoyment. And, and it really is a, a huge escape for me. I get out on the garage floor and I don't really think about much else. So I think that's good in life with anything. If you can kind of get your mind off the daily grind, um, you know, that's awesome. And and being at the track, it's totally that. I, I don't think about what's going on at home and, and such. So it, it's a, it's a great escape for me, both, both aspects of it. Yeah. People don't understand the average person. I don't think understands just how relaxing this sport is because of that, because, Nothing else matters. You're at the track. One thing matters: driving. And if you can also get into that uh, into that state when you're working on your car, um, yeah, it's a it's very relaxing. So I get that. Hey, what's um, can you share with listeners what your one piece of advice, be your speed secrets to them would be? Uh, your one piece of advice to help them perform better as drivers. Uh, for me, it's it's confidence and, you know, confidence in yourself and in your abilities or but it's, you know, a lot of confidence in the car, uh, which kind of goes into the mechanic part of it. I, I have a lot of peace of mind knowing things are right. And if something gets in my head, you know, I hear a clunk or something, it slows me right down. So for me, it's confidence. So. So. But if I just say, OK, be confident. Uh, yeah, well, that where does that come from? <laughs> that doesn't really flip the switch. It, it's just you know, f for me, it's a lot of it is the state of my car. You know, if I think something's wrong or something might break, it really gets in my head, and, and I you know just don't turn fast laps. But if I go out and I'm not concerned about anything, you know, of course you're always listening, but 
that's when I drive the fastest is when I feel like my car is a hundred percent. Um, and, and then I, I guess it just, it, bur- it builds my driver confidence as well. Knowing that. So it's the preparation. That For me a lot, you know, and, and like I said, you know, switch into a, a stickier tire this year. I, there's been some find the confidence in, in, in that, but, um, yeah, I I just really need to know that my car's together and something's not going to break. Uh, so for somebody that does the work on themselves, that makes a whole lot of sense. Like just you know, have checklists, have ways to make sure that you're when you show up, you're confident that you prepped your car. For somebody that's not mechanically inclined, you need to find somebody who you have confidence in. I guess uh, you know the that's kind of my take on it. And I know it's, you know, it's really not the typical speed secret you get from your, from your guests, but uh, I'm speaking, I guess I feel like I'm speaking from a little bit of different um, experience and, you know, most of your guys are racers, so they have some other or uh, other tips, but um, yeah, I mean, for me, that's what it really, I need to feel comfortable when I get in the car and, and um, then I drive faster. Well, and as you say that, you know, I've been doing this podcast for almost three years now. And, uh, you know, most, I, I would say, yeah, whenever I've tried to poll people and everything, um, most are not racers. Actually, they're HPDE, track day. Oh, really? And autocrossers and, yeah, the club racers and the, you know, the so-called low-budget uh, endurance racers. So a little bit of a mix of everybody. But, you know, um you know, I, I I would say probably you're pretty typical as well. So um, oh. I don't I don't want to I don't want to take anything special away from you, but but uh, you're, no. pretty, you're no. pretty typical too. So I, I I don't need to feel special. I you know, and yeah. I have I've only listened to uh, I don't know five or six of your podcasts, and I, I would hear the speed secrets and think, hmm, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Well, that I guess, that's but they good. helped me. Yeah, and honestly, I hadn't listened to a podcast ever before um, you invited me to be on, and and I've grown to love them. Well, lo- love yours. Yeah. I'm just I'm just going down the list one after the other. Well, there's a lot of them out there. There's uh, I, I was uh, talking to somebody recently who has a podcast, and I'm like, well, doesn't everybody have a podcast these days? It seems like, um, but uh, I, you know what you're doing for the sport beyond. Um, you know, beyond uh, what you do behind the wheel with your website and stuff like that is so hugely valuable. So thank you for doing that. And, and you, you know, when we talked about is the sport growing, the sport can't grow unless people know about it. So your site is helping that. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for saying that. And, um, you know, that, that it really it kind of comes to, and I left this out when you asked why I started the site after I did one, it was just one of those things that I wanted everybody to do this. You know, it's kind of like if you've had a great cheeseburger somewhere and you're like, oh, man, you got to have a cheeseburger at this place. Yeah. So, um, you know, I wanted everybody to know you can drive your car on the racetrack safely. And really that's the biggie for me is it's so much safer than the average person would think especially if you compare it to driving on back roads. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a takeaway. I'm I'm thinking about, you know, some of the things you've talked about here and the takeaways and you know, the one is, hey, if you're listening to this and you have anything to do with an event, make sure that Dave knows about your event. Uh I guess they can just go to hpdejunkie.com and there's there's contact info that they can let you know about your their event, correct? That's correct. There's a contact email um, on the website. I'm the one that answers it. So yeah, I encourage any new groups that are, you know, started and I just haven't found you or, you know, especially PCA. I have so many people ask me, what about PCA events? And I want to have them. Um, So yeah, contact at HPDE Junkie or Dave at HPDE Junkie.com. Either one. I'd love to hear from you and get your events on the site. And and actually, um, the social medias are all HPDE Junkie, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. 
and I'll put uh, mm-hmm. I'll put all that info in the show notes as well. So if somebody's listening to this while they're driving, uh, don't write all that down. Just wait, and you can uh, check the show notes, and that those links will be in there. So, um, hey Dave, again, thanks for being on the show today and talking with me about this. And you know, it's to me, it's encouraging that our sport is growing and. You know, yeah, hopefully more tracks will be more available. And, but I think, you know, a bigger thing is uh, the more people know about the events and maybe, maybe a, a, a challenge to everybody listening to this is go get one more person, like go convince one person, you know, somebody you work with, a friend, a family member, whoever, <laughs> somebody you just see on the, in the parking lot, convince them to come to a track event, send them to your website, uh, hpdjunkie.com. They can find an event that's close to them. Go do it. Just jump in and and go drive, right? Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's not there's not many cars that they don't allow. Yeah. Um, and, and and even some that you would never think. I've I've seen a couple of pickup trucks and I've seen some SUVs. And, and of course, they're more the performance um, models. But I, I encourage anyone if you've got a car that's safe, try it. Yeah. It's so much yeah. fun. And, and even if you don't, I bet you know somebody who would invite you to come out, try it a little bit, get a taste of it. And uh, who knows, pretty soon you'll be buying a Miata, a trailer, a tow vehicle, tools. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down the rabbit hole fast. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Dave, again, thanks for, for doing what you do. Uh Keep uh, keep having fun on the track. Keep thrashing that uh, Miata around the track. Hey, thank you, Ross, and, and I really appreciate you uh, having me on the show as a guest. It's been a, a great time talking with you. Um, I feel like we could talk for another hour at least, but um, but I get it. You, you've got time restraints. Uh, I I think every just about every podcast I've ever ent- ended ended with anybody, it's been we could talk for another hour. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I've always kind of said, you know, I'm aiming for that 45 minute range, uh, so somebody could listen to this in their commute to work, or more importantly, their commute to the track. So, um, sure. hey, one of these days we're going to bump into each other at the track, and we'll have even more fun. We will absolutely. Okay, I look forward to it. Thanks, Dave. Have fun. Thank you, Ross. Okay, so here's the big announcement. The Speed Secrets Podcast is going on hiatus. Yep, I'm taking a few months off from recording them, but I'm planning on coming back. It's just that with my current coaching commitments, I need some time to get caught up on some other projects, some other training resources for drivers like you. So it's not like I'm going away. I'm still committed to helping you be an even better driver. I'm just focusing on other ways of helping you for a while. And speaking of that, if you have questions about driving, send them to me by email. Every week I answer one in my Ask Ross column on my speedsecrets.com website. You know, I really appreciate you listening to these podcasts for the past, oh, almost three years. So, really, thank you. I hope that when I start up again, you'll join me again. And, as always, keep learning and having fun.
As a near lifetime subscriber to Road and Track, I will admit that there were a few years when it wasn't my favorite publication. But it's back. If you haven't read it for a while, you need to pick up an issue and then subscribe. I think the content is as good or better than it's ever been before, and you'll find the most interesting and well-written pieces in it. Well, other than my stuff, but you can ignore that stuff. Hey, you know, one of the reasons I love doing this podcast is because I get a chance to talk with cool people like Travis. And guess what? I'll be back next week with another cool guest, so hope you join me. Until then, keep learning and having fun.